Hello. I'm going to tell you a story from the French Revolution, which really captures many of the themes of this period of history. And this is the story of Jean-Paul Marat. Now, Jean-Paul Marat was a handsome young doctor before the French Revolution. And when the events of 1789 began to unfold, they really captured the young Jean-Paul Marat's imagination. And he decided to give up being a doctor, to give up medicine and to throw his energies and efforts behind supporting the revolution. And so he began to publish in Paris a newspaper called the L'Ami du Peuple, the Friend of the People, which uh, argued that uh, the French Revolution is a wonderful thing and that anybody who, who stood in its way should be stamped out and even killed. Now, in the early days of the revolution, this was a very dangerous message and the moderates who controlled the National Assembly, the Girondins, uh, thought that Marat should be arrested. So, uh, so they sent out the National Guard to try and arrest him, but Marat uh, hid and avoided arrest by hiding in the sewers of Paris. And whilst he was there, he contracted a very nasty and painful skin disorder, a psoriasis of the skin, um, that caused him to lose his, his youthful handsomeness and meant that he had to constantly wrap bandages soaked in vinegar around his face and the rest of his skin just to cause him some relief give him some relief from the pain. So many of his friends said that he quite often smelled of rotting flesh uh, and of the tang of, of vinegar as well because of his condition. But this didn't stop him being a very popular figure um, with the people of Paris, with the sans culottes, the mob in Paris. And he was uh, very soon uh, elected to the convention that was the new name for the National Assembly, so the uh, ruling group of France. And when Robespierre uh, took control and, 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 and the hardliners began to control the convention and the events of the revolution, um, Ma became a, a more and more powerful figure and he threw himself in the, he was a more powerful figure in the convention. And here's the conventional meeting together. Um, actually, for the trial of Louis XVI, this meeting was. But Ma threw himself behind the revolution and behind the terror as well. Um, and he thought that, that, that many people who were enemies of the people who weren't enthusiastic about the revolution should be guillotined. And let me introduce you to another character in, in our story. And this was uh, a lady called Charlotte Corday. Now, Charlotte Corday came from a noble family. But she was actually a supporter of the revolution. She thought that France needed to be modernised and that the three-estate um, three system was, was outdated. And so uh, she, she initially supported the revolution. She was, she was a Girondin, a moderate. But as Robespierre and Ma took power and more and more people were being guillotined in Paris, she had to flee with her family to Caen uh, in the north of France. And... Um, in Caen, she became more and more concerned about what was happening in the revolution. Um, her mother had died in childbirth a few years earlier, and the priest who had read her mother her last rites, a, a friend of the family, he had refused to swear an oath in support of the revolution because the revolution had shut down churches. Um, and so uh, the priest, who's a friend of the family, was actually the first person to be guillotined in court as an enemy of the revolution. And this greatly upset Charlotte. She, she wanted to do something to stop all the violence that was happening in Paris. And so she, she left a note to her father in Caen and, and, and asked him to forgive her because she was going to Paris to see what she could do about the situation. And Charlotte actually planned to take a very drastic measure. She planned to murder one of the leaders of the convention, Jean-Paul Marat. So on the 13th of July, 1793, Charlotte uh, bought a dagger and she concealed it under her dress. And she waited patiently outside the convention uh, for Jean-Paul Marat to appear. But he didn't. But upon inquiring, somebody told uh, Charlotte that Jean-Paul Marat actually had to stay home that day because his skin was causing him so much pain uh, that he needed to stay in the bath. And so Charlotte uh, took herself off to uh, 
John Paul Marat's house, 30 Rue de Cordelier. And she knocked on the door and she was greeted by um, John Paul Marat's mistress, Simone Evrard. And uh, initially, Simone Evrard said, oh, I'm sorry, Jean Paul Marat is too, uh, too poorly. You can't see him today. But Charlotte went back a second time. And Simone said, look, I'm very sorry, madam, but you cannot uh, see him. He's, he's in a lot of pain and sent him away. And then the uh, third time that Jean-Paul Mao went round, uh, about seven o'clock in the evening, uh, she, she was quite insistent and said, I, I must see him. And, and Simone said, oh, no, of course you can't see him. But Jean-Paul Mao, who was in the bath, uh, heard them arguing and he called down and he said, oh, Simone, uh, if there's somebody to see me, let them in. And so uh, Jean-Paul Mao allowed uh, Charlotte Corday uh, into his bathroom whilst he was he was uh, doing some work in the bath and agreed to to to, to give her an audience and they uh, reports suggest they spoke for about 10 to 15 minutes in which time Charlotte Corday said I, I have some names from some anti-revolutionary people in Caen um, can I show them to you and so she gave him a list of names and Mara allegedly said well I'll make sure that they are dealt with I'll make sure they all go to the guillotine and at that point uh, Charlotte took a dagger out from under her dress and planted it firmly in Jean Mara's chest uh, Jean Marat uh, called out to Simon to help him and there was a, another of his friends in the adjacent room who was working on the, the next edition of the, the Friend of the People and they rushed in but they were too late. He'd, he'd lost too much blood um, and he was on his way to dying. Charlotte made no attempt at all to, uh, to escape. She was arrested and the... Um, Revolutionary Tribunal couldn't believe that she had acted alone. They thought that this was a, an attempt by the moderates or even by the King's supporters to end the revolution. But they could find no evidence at all to suggest she was part of the plot. Uh, and in fact, this brave young woman had acted alone uh, because of what she believed in. And four days later, she herself uh, was led away to the guillotine and was uh, herself met the fate of many of her many of her friends, and she was guillotined. Now, the uh, the revolutionary government, the convention, decided that Ma had been a martyr; that he uh, had died because of his beliefs. And so they wanted to make him into a popular figure, a figure of inspiration for other people to continue supporting revolution. So uh, they asked a chap called David to, uh, to lead this kind of propaganda campaign to make Marat into this, into this saintly martyred figure. And David produced this painting of Marat's death. You can see the serene, almost saintliness with which he meets his death. And you can just make out the small incision where Charlotte planted the dagger. And the cloth soaking vinegar which he would wear almost make him look like a biblical figure. Um, now it, uh, under Mara's, uh, David's paintbrush. But uh, the, the convention was so inspired by David's work that they said that, that they should actually get Mara's body um, and make sure it was embalmed and to uh, and to make this this painting a, a real life thing. So Mara's embalmed body was exhibited uh, to the people of Paris so that they could see this this almost uh, saintly embalmed relic for themselves um, and so Mara has gone down uh, as a very as a very controversial figure that to some he was a, a a real hero of the revolution who died for his beliefs but to others he was a brutal passionless murderer just like Robespierre who, who got his due thanks to the actions of a very